You need a good dictionary to do well in English. Now, I don't care if it's an electronic dictionary or a paper dictionary. It just has to have certain qualities to it. I don't care if you buy a new dictionary or use a dictionary that you already have. It just has to have certain qualities. I'll go through these qualities and then they're also listed on Canvas. The first thing to do is to look up in your dictionary, look up the F word. If your dictionary doesn't have the F word in it, it's not a good dictionary. What, you say? Yes, it's true. Because the first thing you want to look for is the number of words defined. And a good dictionary will have that word in it because it will have a bunch of other words. A good dictionary has about 200,000 words defined. Now, the Webster's Dictionary has about 180,000, and the American Heritage Dictionary has about 250,000 words. Now, it doesn't matter to me if, if you get one of those dictionaries. I'm just giving you an example. When dictionaries cut down on the number of words, one of the words they'll cut down on is that F word. So your spell checker on your word processing program will have about 60,000 words. That's not enough. Now, you know you and I don't know 200,000 words, but you want a dictionary that will have the word in it you need. So number one, make sure it has the F word in it. Next, you need a dictionary that is recent. Now, we haven't had many dictionary renewal um, ha happening. So what you want is a dictionary that advertises something like 20,000 new words added. So you know your dictionary is updated. Now, of course, when they add 20,000 words, they'll take away 20,000 words. So that's why I never throw away an old dictionary. Next, something that you, I would not buy a dictionary if it didn't have it, but that's up to you, is are there sentences that show how the word is used? Besides the definition of the word, are there sentences? Because you want to um, be able to use the word properly. So that's helpful. And that makes a big difference to me when buying a dictionary. Next, the order of definitions. Now, if you know the order of definitions, it's it won't make any difference whether you buy that dictionary or not, but I'll just give you an idea so you can figure it out. Some dictionaries put the most recent definition first. So that works for somebody where you look up the word in the dictionary and you just read that first definition and slam the dictionary. Now, of course, you could be using electronic, which is okay too. So, uh, some people put the oldest definition first, so that might not work unless you read all of the definitions. Some dictionaries put the most common definition first. So you just need to know the order of definitions. It probably won't make any difference of how what dictionary you get. Or you could just decide to read all the definitions. Next, you need to know and check the currency status or usage label on the word. So if you look up the F word in your dictionary, it will have a label. Now, every dictionary has its own philosophy. So if the label says taboo for the F word, that means that's a very conservative dictionary. If the label says non-standard for the F word, you know it's a more liberal dictionary. Now, I know dictionaries are supposed to be neutral, but they aren't always neutral. So here's another word to look up in your dictionary, ain't, A-I-N apostrophe T. Now, it will have a status label. The status label will say something like uh, non-standard or illiterate. 
So illiterate would be a conservative dictionary and non-standard would be a liberal dictionary. Now we have historical use of the word ain't and in actuality the word ain't could be used but it has such a stigma such a bad reputation that if you use the word ain't you look like you're stupid so cut that out of your vocabulary unhappily you'll have to do that so another thing you can see is some words won't have a label that means it's okay to use anywhere. Another thing to see if your dictionary has is etymology, the history of the word at the end. It will be in brackets. And that's helpful sometimes. Also as helpful is what part of speech. It'll tell you what the noun or verb, pronoun, you know, all those things that you learned in eighth grade that you quit, quickly forgotten. So having a good dictionary is important. You don't need to spend a lot of money. You can have a paperback one you got to use to bookstore. You can have electronic one. I don't have any one kind of brand of dictionary that I like a whole lot, so I can't recommend it to you. Uh, the questions I ask you on the dictionary, see if you can guess what dictionary Malcolm X was using, because there's a hint in that reading I gave you. So choose a good dictionary, one you already have, or one that you may have to buy. So good luck.